Hello, my friends. So today I want to tackle a subject which has intrigued me for a long time and many others. And it is uh, something that was inspired by Eugene Wigner's uh, original paper on the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics and uh, his observations. So right now I'm looking at some of uh, the observations that he made and uh, I'm looking at them on my iPhone and also commentaries by other people. So I'm going to read a little bit from what I found. Wigner begins his paper with the belief common among those familiar with mathematics that mathematical concepts have applicability far beyond the context in which they were originally developed. Based on his experience, he writes, it is important to point out that the mathematical formulation of the physicist's often crude experience leads to an uncanny number of cases, in an uncanny number of cases, to an amazingly accurate description of a large class of phenomena. He then invokes the fundamental law of gravitation and as an example. Originally, he originally used to model free falling bodies on the surface of the earth. This law was extended on the basis of what Wigner terms very scanty observations to describe the motion of the planets where it has proved accurate beyond all reasonable expectations. Beyond all reasonable expectations. Another oft-cited example is Maxwell's equations derived to model the elementary electrical and magnetic phenomena known as of the mid-19th century. The equations also describe radio waves discovered by David Edward Hughes in 1879, around the time of James Clerk Maxwell's death. Wigner sums up his argument by saying that the enormous usefulness of mathematics in the natural sciences is something bordering on the mysterious, and there's no rational explanation for it. He concludes his paper with the same question with which he began. The miracle of the appropriateness of the language of mathematics for the formulation of the laws of physics is a wonderful gift which we neither understand nor deserve. We should be grateful for it and hope that it will remain valid in, the, in future research and that it will extend for better or for worse to our pleasure, even though perhaps also to our bafflement to wide branches of learning. Um, Wigner's work provides a fresh insight into both physics and the philosophy of math and has been fairly often cited in the academic literature on the philosophy of physics and mathematics. Wigner speculated on the relationship between the philosophy of science and the foundations of mathematics. It is difficult, quote unquote, to avoid the impression that a miracle confronts us here quite comparable in its striking nature to the miracle that the human mind can string a thousand arguments together without getting itself into contradictions or to the two miracles of laws of nature and the and of the human mind's capacity to divine them. Okay, so I'm not going to go into all the other comments here, but this uh, uh, question has always intrigued me. I've asked my friends, physicists and others, uh, why is mathematics so reasonable in um, describing physical laws? No one can give me an answer. I asked Leonard Millard now, who I'm going to be seeing later today, and ask him the same question. He is my co-author in War of the World Views and co-author of Stephen Hawking as well. I have also asked this question of Don Hoffman. Some people say, well, mathematics is inherent in the structure of the universe. Others say, well, we can't explain it. So my friends, I'm going to give you an explanation for this. And uh, I know many will object and that's okay, but I want you to think about it and tell me what, the, what, what you find objectionable about this explanation because I'm always willing to learn. Here's my explanation. Um, mathematics is 
is a mental construct of the human mind in consciousness. Once again, mathematics is a mental construct in consciousness. It's a mental language in consciousness. How about the universe? How about the physical universe? That too is a mental construct in consciousness. What we call the universe with force fields, particles, waves, atoms, molecules, uh, all these words are actually mental constructs for modes of knowing and experience in consciousness. So to me, this is nothing mysterious. Equations are mental constructs and the universe with everything that we described about it is a mental construct and interpretation of sense impressions, sensations, images, feelings, thoughts, which are fluctuations of consciousness. And these fluctuations of consciousness uh, the human mind gives them explanations. And one of the explanations for qualia experiences, qualia means qualities of experience, sense impressions, sensations, images, feelings, thoughts, within the narrow band of uh, uh, electromagnetic activity that we have access to, and extending it through our sensory uh, extensions, uh, whether they are hadron colliders or ultrastroboscopic microscopes, is nothing other than extending our range of experience uh, perceptually and cognitively. So the universe is a mental construct, a human mental construct, the universe that we experience, not other species, maybe other species too, as we describe their experiences that's mental construct. So mathematical equations and the universe have to correspond because they're both looking at the same thing, a mental construct in the human mind. And the human mind is a modified form of non-local awareness. In other words, both the universe and the equations described to explain the universe are existing only as modifications of consciousness. The universe is consciousness experienced as form and phenomena. If you object to this, I would love to hear your objections. If you agree, I'd like to hear that too. Okay, thank you very much and more to come. Mm -hmm.